good afternoon. My name is Carmen Roberts Kowalczyk, and this is. Hi, I'm Dee Zilke, and I'm with Solar Lunar Yoga, providing yoga with elevated experience camping. And we're here today to tell you about our fabulous day we had down at the campground, giving everybody an elevated experience, enjoying different types of yoga. But before we get into the different types we have, as always, we start off with our um, quote for the day or the video. And Dee's going to provide that to us. What's your quote for today? Oh, yeah. I thought it would uh, be yoga-based just because that's what we're talking about. And it is that for yoga, you only need to find yourself as everything else can be Googled. <laughs> that's an awesome one. <laughs> and as always, we have a fun fact. And my fun fact today is actually about goats because we do provide goat yoga down here. And it's like goats were actually the first animal humans ever tamed. So goats actually are very tameable. They can be just like pets, dogs, cats, better than cats. Well, kind of. They can have attitude like cats. cats. But yeah, we've got an elevated experience uh, camping. We do lots of different type of yoga. We uh, had goat yoga today. We had family yoga. We had kid yoga. And so Dee is our instructor and she takes all my uh, interesting ideas and she helps bring them to life for me. So we thought since we had such an awesome day with yoga today, we were going to ask Dee questions, all things yoga related. So my first question is why did you decide to become a yoga instructor? Good question. Um, so I'm actually a registered uh, social worker within the province of Alberta and also a certified child need care worker. Uh, within the province of Alberta, now called Child and Youth Care Counselor. And my goal was to provide low-cost yoga classes and mindfulness to anyone who wanted to access it, because I find it very expensive and very inaccessible to a lot of individuals that could benefit from it. So I did my 200-hour um, yoga teacher intensive in 2017 and was able to provide some classes until I broke my ankle and needed to recover from that, though I did teach kids yoga throughout that entire time in a cast, which was very interesting. And uh, since then, um, I took some time off just to um, feed my own body, mind, and soul um, back on my mat, slowly and surely, because my rehabilitation was a little bit slow. And in 2020, I decided to take the leap and um, branch out with Solar Lunar Yoga to let the light and all that stuff shine with solar and lunar light. Awesome. And join us yeah. on our journey. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you just, um, sorry, what do you think are the three benefits of yoga for people and why are those the best three benefits in your opinion? Well, it does differ from person to person based on the type of yoga um, because they do uh, a diff like a whole bunch of varieties of yoga. So I guess depending on the class, I would really want to focus on ensuring that they're able to be present in the moment um, so that they're not bothered by anything that's happened in the past and anything they're worried about in the future um, because that creates enjoyment and it also provides them the opportunity to fully be in their practice. Um, and that can be with any yoga, like kids yoga, family yoga, prenatal yoga, etc. cetera. Um, and then also listening to your body. Um, I always say that listening to yourself first and then body mind and soul and then usually I'm fourth after that and uh, with prenatal yoga it's listening to you and baby and then body mind and soul and then me um, but ultimately if you're listening to your your body and stopping where you need to stop or giving yourself modifications there's nothing wrong with that because that means that you are in tune with how you're feeling that day and um, the third one would be that no practice is ever going to be the same and being where you are today could be different from yesterday and it could be different from tomorrow and just being aware that just like life things fluctuate on your mat and that wherever you're at um, I'm hoping as a yoga teacher I can support you as best I can and with coming into and being present in the space and also listening to your body then that awareness of what you need in that class should become more clear and that's what I believe hopefully Awesome. So when I approached you about my vision down here at a campground to do goat yoga, what was your initial thought? Let's do it. Awesome. I'm so excited. I have 10 animals myself. I do snake yoga with my snake. Um, and my bunny likes to hop around when I do yoga as well. So everyone who does online yoga with me has seen either my bunny or my cats. 
Um, I love doing dog yoga, goat yoga. Unfortunately, I don't have any goats, so I piggybacked on Carmen for that, which is amazing. And I would love to branch out and do all sorts of animal yoga if possible. So we need to yes. get on that for sure. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. In the works for 2021. Yes. All right. Do goats fart and burp during yoga? 100%. They do. And they also will poop and pee on you or on your mat. Um, I love the fact that they give you no warning. So it also makes you aware in your practice of what's going on around you. And um, they love to cough and they make great noises from top of their head to the bottom of their butt. It's awesome. <laughs> so tell us a bit about the kidney family yoga that you're offering down here at Elevated Experience Camping. So much fun. It is the best opportunity to connect with other kids um, your own age um, for the kids yoga and even with family yoga. You get to connect with your family and also see how other families function in the family class. Um, the biggest thing that I get is when I ask kids and families in the class what they think yoga is. It's stretching and exercising and breathing and moving and there's not a lot of enthusiasm in it which makes me really sad because my family and kids yoga is so much fun. We move around, we dance, we sing, we get silly and honestly laughter is like the main part of kids and family yoga and I love it. Literally have two rules in those classes and the first rule is respect and the second rule is you gotta have fun. So um, being able to do partner yoga and to be able to just laugh at either falling over or leaning into someone or just having that amazing experience, it just brings light and love in so many ways and it's just so much fun. Awesome. So what will, uh, people will often say yoga is not for them. What is your response to that? Yoga is for everybody and every body, every body, mind and soul. Um, no matter where you're at, um, chair yoga, you can do yoga lying in bed, any kind of movement. So like there are books out there and they say like 2100, um, different postures. And then I get another one where there's like 4,400 and like, honestly, the definition of yoga is to unite body, mind, and soul and like action and the soul and those kind of aspects. So when you think about it, any type of movement is yoga, like moving my pinky can be essentially yoga and it's not much but it's something. And to someone that is their entire world. To others, it's just moving their pinky. Though to them, it is such a milestone. And I personally believe that whatever you're doing and if you call it yoga, that's amazing. And if it can bring you to that present state and awareness and feed your soul and your cup and just make you feel amazing, then that is what the goal is. And I, I firmly believe that yoga and wellness for every body, mind and soul is life and that is yoga and hopefully we can shine that on everybody absolutely especially because mm -hmm. they're down here to elevate an experience but relax mm -hmm. and sort of de-stress yeah and really have that opportunity to refocus and um, it's amazing the alternatives that individuals don't think about to reconnect with themselves and their family members it's amazing how much connection there is when you disconnect from everything around you. So that's what this elevated experience is all about on the campground, especially with the yoga, because that provides you that opportunity to just shut everything else off and just focus on your family and those that you love around you. And hopefully that also includes yourself because that's super important. And goats, let's be honest, it involves the goats too. We love goats. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They're goat-tastic. <laughs> so here's another of those questions uh, I was, want to ask you is how do you react if a participant farts in class because that's a oh. fear that often people have they've heard the rumor mm -hmm. that people fart in yoga there are a number of poses that are either named wind reliever pose or modified wind reliever pose baby pose is one of them anything that pretty much gets your body moving is going to create some sort of discomfort with your gas and intestines because you're twisting them around and moving it and let's be honest bodily functions and body sounds means you're healthy, let's be honest, because nobody wants to be bloated and keep all that inside of them. So why don't you just release it and just let it go and just let it go out of your body. Cause let's like, we all have to eat. We all have to put that stuff in our body. So what goes in must come out in some way. So it's either coming back out the, the way it came in or it's coming out in other ways like sweat um, or you're burning off the energy or you're farting it, which is fine. And you know what? Sometimes the class just has to get musical with body sounds. Why not? 
And what and we're really fortunate because we do all our yoga classes outside in the outdoors. So again, you're not confined to a room where there's maybe a lack of ventilation. You get the beautiful sunshine or like right now it's overcast, but still very, very warm. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it, you can space out and just have that sort of private space as well. Mm -hmm. We all fart. We won't admit it, but we all do. Yeah. We all do really? everywhere. And you know what? What happens when you're camping stays at camping, so it's all good. Exactly. That's the elevated experience. We don't talk about what happens here. <laughs> unless <laughs> unless well, it's something fun. <laughs> exactly. So what's your favorite pose? Your ultimate mm. favorite pose? That's a good question. Um, my ultimate favorite pose, when I first started yoga, my favorite pose was actually Warrior Three, And it was because I required so much concentration on it um, because when you, you need the flat back and then your foot has to extend out but not elevate too high and then it needs to be very structured, calm and collected and I needed a lot of concentration for it. So I really appreciated the opportunity I was providing myself to really enjoy it. And now I kind of like any kind of pose, like especially if I'm feeling feeling just a certain pose or if I, if I just like meditate on it, then I love it. But ultimately I love Warrior three, which can also be superhero pose. It can be, um, it could be a um, flying airplane. It could be um, a guinea pig. I mean, it could be it could be anything you want. And I love that about yoga because you can call it anything you want. Because um, let's be honest, guinea pigs can fly too. They when they jump, they go. And same with goats, flying goat. They do. So yeah. All right. One last question for you. If you could teach yoga to anybody in the world. Who would you want to teach it to and why? Like one individual person or a type of person? Oh, it could be either or. I have branched out in my training to be able to provide yoga for like pretty much anyone out there. So like my goal is to really do it with everyone and anyone. So if I was able to do it with one particular person, I would want to do it with I would want to do it. Hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> I'm trying to think because, like, a lot of my idols and stuff have passed on, or they're. Yeah, but you it know, doesn't have to be a present person. It doesn't have to be a present person. Though, you know, time travel could be a bit difficult with staying in the present moment. Yeah. So. <laughs> but if you could do. Yeah. Honestly, I think Nathan Fillion would be a really cool guy to do yoga with. Cause I, I mean, I get that in his characters and stuff that he acts differently. Though I've seen a few videos of him like as himself, and I think he would be a really cool individual to introduce yoga to if he hasn't already been introduced to it. Because we, a lot of people do yoga, they just don't say they do yoga. So I think he would be really cool to do it with. And who is he? For oh! For anyone who doesn't know him, he actually is in a number of different TV shows. Um, Castle was one of the most recent ones that he was in that just ended. Um, and my husband knows him in Firefly because that one's a super old show. It only lasted for two seasons. And he's also in a number of things. Uh, fun fact, he's actually in Edmontonian, born and raised. And his mom recently um, was assisted at a Costco in Edmonton. And so he was on YouTube for that. So a lot of individuals like got introduced to him through that. Um, but I think he's just an amazing all around person. Um, and there are a lot of actors that come from our area that we don't really know about because they've all moved to other areas, you know, for ease of acting and stuff. But I think he would be pretty cool to do yoga with. Awesome. Yeah. Well, again, thank you guys for watching our video. Please come check us out at Elevated Experience Camping, uh, Alberta Camping uh, here down in Drayton Valley. Uh, we're running our yoga classes all the time. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have one of the best yoga instructors around. So uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. See you online. <laughs>